the 11th of June, 1988, in Nairobi, a most extraordinary event. There's a woman in Nairobi called Mary Akatsa, who is a fundamentalist Christian. She doesn't believe in Maitre at all. She believes in the Christ. She's a very devout Christian. She held this meeting just outside the town, and she has 6,000 followers. And we have photographs taken there showing them thousands, 6,000 people. And she said, God has spoken to me, and we're going to be visited by a great being, somebody very, very important. And suddenly, just beside her, stood this figure of Maitreya dressed in a long white robe with a white headdress with a blue band round the headdress. And uh, he had a fly whisk in his hand and he's a tall figure, much taller than the people around. He's actually six feet three inches tall and uh, slim, wide-shouldered and uh, he spoke to the crowds and they all said, ah, ah, they, they thought he was the Christ. They immediately saw him as the Christ or Jesus because they're Christians, you know, so they would think Christ Jesus. So, Jesus, Jesus, Christo, Christo, help me, save me. They were all there for healing. She's an extraordinary healer because Maitreya gives healing through that woman, Mary Akatsa. Did you hear that by yourself now? Maitreya gives healing through that woman, Mary Akatsa. And this Maitreya appeared out of the thin air in Nairobi, Kenya. I've done a video on this. Go to my YouTube channel and watch The Deception of the Ages. You will see I did a video series. Of course, YouTube did not allow us to upload the part one, which I'm probably going to upload to my Rumble channel. But you can see the part two and three over there. I exposed all of these things. Maitreya is a demonic spirit that is appearing into our world as the Antichrist. He is the one who established fake prophetic ministries. The one that you see almost on every street today. And the first place he started that journey was in, in, in Kenya with Mary Ekatsa. Mary Akatsa was one of those women who did prophetic, who had a, she still has a prophetic ministry. She was known for philanthropy. I will play you a video of how people loved Mary Akatsa because she was always helping poor people. This simple woman travels through the country to the people, most of whom live in poverty. Wherever she arrives, she is immediately surrounded by crowds. Like many other third world countries, Kenya suffers from unemployment, crime, drug abuse and prostitution. Mary Akatsa knows the people's sorrows and goes on undeterred, giving comfort and help. <laughs> Because of her compassion, people lovingly and respectfully call her mommy. Everywhere you turn, Mary Akatsa will go to villages. People will flood windows, poor people, beggars, everybody. That was what she was known for. And that was the one that Maitreya chose to hand over the baton to. And Maitreya gave her that big cross that he took from his garment. And then blessed her with the curse of Satan. And she carried on with that fake miraculous performances. And her philanthropy increased even the more. So people couldn't quite criticize Mary Akatsa because of the good things that she was doing. This is how Satan operates. Mary Akatsa, till this day, go and check what I'm telling you. Everything is legit, it's true. My trade, I give them power to perform. Matthew 7, 22. On that day, many will come to me and say, Master, Master, did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not heal the sick in your name? Did we not this or that in your name? He said, I will say to them, away from me, you evildoers. For I know not who you are. Can you imagine? You cast out demons and heal the sick in the name of Jesus Christ. And at the end of the day, what happened? 
What happened? He said, away from me, for I know not who you are. He didn't even know who they are. Like he, he would tell them, I, I don't know you. Who are you? And yet they cast because the Bible said they will come and they will have power. Do you hear what the man is saying? He said that many people will say, oh, Christ has come, Jesus Christ. They even call it in full, Jesus Christ. Jesus means nothing. Christ is an expected Messiah. Jesus Christ. They call his name Jesus Christ. The name of our Lord is Yeshua, which means salvation. That's his name. But they don't care. They will call his name even in Yeshua. They can actually use it to perform miracles. And at the end of the day, they are still fake because the Bible says the time will come. When a time for anything comes, there are no boundaries anymore, no more limitations. So they have been able to use this to deceive the rest of the world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, the Bible tells us it's going to happen. Matthew 7, 22, hello. In your name we did this. So even if they were using the real name of the Lord, they would still be able to do it. But at the end of the day, he doesn't know who they are. That's why the very elect has now, have now been deceived. God's elect have been deceived as at this moment. And so the final thought on this guy that you call the first prophet was, when I saw him asking for arms and for help, I was, wow. He even gave an account that every minute he talks, he will say, I don't know why I didn't screenshot that. He will say, oh, <clears throat> I want to help people in IDPs. There are so many people who are suffering. There are so many people who are doing this. Oh, da, 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 da. I want to help. I want to help. I want to help. And I said, oh, this is actually one thing we've known about Maitreya when we were doing deep research and studies on him. He is always wanting to go and help the poor. Remember Mary Akatsa, remember all these prophets. Many of them are more into going to help. They want to help the poor. Because this is a perfect cover for the real rot that is on the inside of them. Charity is a way to distract the world. And people will even be fighting for them. Charity Help, help people. So this one now, false prophet, is already raising money, he's so concerned about the people in IDP, not only in Nigeria, but in different parts of the world. And I said, I have seen that somewhere before. Apart from Mary Akats, I want you to listen to this man, what he said when he encountered Maitreya. Benjamin Krem was doing a meditation service somewhere, I think in Washington, D.C., and this man attended. And when he was there, Maitreya manifested physically, came and sat beside him and started having a conversation with him. I want you to listen to what Maitreya told him was his major concern. Watch. That Maitreya came in, sat next to me. I did not recognize him. Did everybody else or people who could they saw see him. Benjamin Krem could see him? They saw him. Uh, ben, of course, immediately knew it was Maitreya. Right. But I didn't. Right. I just thought he was another guy and right. eventually he, I realized he wanted to talk to me and so I told him, I said, do you want to speak to me? And he pulled me up and we went out of the room and that's where he asked, he said, I need your help. And when people say, I need your help, it's usually reach yeah. for your wallet, give right. me a buck, you know? God or God. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Right. I, was, I was looking at this uh, man that looked about 29, 30 years of age in perfect health beautiful grammar and i'm thinking what does he need a dollar from me for and finally i said i don't understand what kind of help are you talking about and that's when he said i have a lot of people to take care of in this world and i need all the help from humanity that i can get i need all the help i can get from humanity because i have so many people that i want to help this is typical maitreya spirit help 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 everywhere Peace, 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 peace everywhere. Oh, let the world be at peace. Oh, we need to help people. Please, let's share. That's why the organization that Benjamin Cram set up with which he was promoting Maitreya at the time was called Share International. Maitreya's emergence into our world began way back, I think, 1977. 
there was a there was a commercial about him coming on CNN, and when he had arrived, they also did a commercial again. If the Christ or Buddha returned today, would you recognize him? The one awaited by all major religions has come when we least expected it. He is ready to emerge openly very soon. Look for a bright star shining in the sky night and day as a sign of his public emergence. There's a man called Job Matungi who was the editor of the Kenya Times. He said the, the Saturday before, the week before, he was in the town, center of the town, and he saw a star going round and round like a, it wasn't an aeroplane, it was a star. And it was silently going round and round the, the town. He said it reminded me of the star of Bethlehem, you know, uh, that the, uh, the wise men followed into the town. And, but it didn't, he didn't know anything about it. He just saw it. He said, oh my, this must be a portent. This must mean something very big is going to happen. But he didn't know what, and nothing happened except that, which was big enough. The week later, Mary Akatsa said a great being is coming and just suddenly, out of miraculously, out of nowhere, came Maitreya. He spoke to the crowd in perfect, unexcited Swahili for maybe 15, 20 minutes. The world knows this. They know. Almost every event you see unfolding in our world today, he is behind the scene making them happen because the world must cry out for him. The world must need him. Remember what I keep telling you about problem, reaction, solution. Order out of chaos. There has to be massive, humongous, monstrous chaos that will bring about, that will not give him relevance because when that chaos happens, and he's able to bring peace, the world will not say, oh, this is the Savior. Oh, somebody has brought peace between Israel and Palestine. Oh, this must be the Savior. People must be messed up and pushed to the world to the point of exhaustion that when that help comes, everybody will just throw themselves on this Savior. This is what I see and think about this person that you call the false prophet. He has given you a date, November 16, 2024. Don't take it for granted. Like I said, I'm going to share with us some of the prophecies that this person put out there. But before then... Uh, Maitreya can speak through me. I can't command him to. I am closer to you than you may think. No distance separates us. And I can tell you truly But it is not long before you see my face. How soon? Good night, my friends.
<laughs> okay, so Benjamin Cram speaking, but it wasn't really him speaking. It was Maitreya speaking through him. That's exactly the same thing I believe about this false prophet now. I believe this body is a Nigerian body. I believe Maitreya is speaking directly through this individual. That's why the grammar is the way it is. If my trial goes into an American, he will speak impeccable American English. When he went to Mary Akatsa in Kenya, in Nairobi, Kenya, in the 80s, he spoke Swahili, live and direct. Anybody he takes over their being, he will speak what you speak exactly the way you speak it. This is what has happened now. That's why I want everybody to be very careful. Don't brush aside what this fellow is saying. They are saying things that they've already planned to do. They are saying things they know will happen. That's why he was very emphatic about the death of TB Joshua. And when he said it, I don't think he had up to even five or ten likes. I think people started going to like his post after the thing had come to pass. And now he said also that this young woman called DJ Copy is going to die. That she will die suddenly of a drug overdose in her home, in her room. And I'm telling everyone who knows DJ Copy, I'm not here to confirm or make him popular. But I'm telling you, these people, they know what they are seeing because they have... They are the ones coming to invade and take over our world. I'm telling you, DJ Copy needs to seek prayers. She needs to seek prayers. Whatever it is that's going on with her, she needs to seek prayers and let someone go pray with her. I wish I know her contact. I will reach out to her and pray with her and give her cover. But people can, she can reach out to anybody and pray. And they fat this rubbish because these guys, they're not playing. I'm telling you this right now. He talked about the third mainland bridge. This is another one he repeated. So for people who think he's backdating, backdating his prophets, how come that one hasn't happened and he's still repeating it? Third mainland bridge is going to collapse. And I'm telling you the truth. I have witnessed this when I was in Lagos, going out of Lagos to the airport. I'm telling you, I got on third mainland bridge and the, the image of the collapse flooded my mind. Now, let me tell you the one that I saw. I saw the angle that when you're moving from Ikoi, Lagos, and now you're heading to the airport, that's the part of Todd Mena that I saw collapse. And the way I saw it, it went right. It collapsed right into the water. It didn't collapse like this. It, it fell like a bunch of the pillars just went like this, and they all fell into the water. That's what I saw several, several, several months ago. And he's saying the same thing right now. He said that Abuja is going to be invaded. There will be rockets, there will be bombs, and nobody will be able to go in or go out. What did I tell you people from the last videos that I made? Talked about a coup d'etat. Talked about terrorists taking over Abuja. I talked about these things. I talked about it. Funny enough, they're talking about the same thing now. So these people can see stuff. We need to be very careful. Now he said that the UBA headquarters... On the island that is going to collapse and people are going to die. I don't want you to take that for granted. I'm serious. I'm, that's why I had to make this video. Because when you don't know something, you really don't know something. That's why God said my people perish for lack of knowledge. Do not take what this person is saying for granted. They know what they are saying. They've got the power to say these things. That's why the fake prophets can tell you the color of your pants, tell you what is happening in your village, and they're not lying, even though they're using the powers of the devil. And they, what they're saying to you is true. That's why many people are deceived. That's why many people go to those places to go and watch drama and watch Nollywood movie. Hey, you are this. You go there. Hey, yes, man of God. This, they're using the power of Satan. Not all of them completely. But the ones who use the real power of God to do this, I don't think they're up to 1%. Just one, two, or three, at most, the rest, fake. Take my word for it. I know. So let's be careful. We just need to watch and pray. We just need to be strong and know that despite everything we do today, the coming of our Lord is as close as ever. The world is about to be turned over to the enemy. Draw closer to your God.
everything in our world as we know it is about to come crumbling down and the devil is ready for this spread on your own because god is eventually going to save all of us god bless you